Hello and welcome to the show. Every week we discuss different running and chiropractic topics, taking full advantage of Dr. Smith's 40 plus years of experience in each. Hitting things running, pun fully intended, is there a correct running form? Well, there is. The correct running form is the one that's correct for you. I would venture to say that most people have a running gait that's almost like a fingerprint. That's how unique you are. The angle of your hips, the length of your hips, how long the neck of your femur is. All these different anatomical variations make for a gait that's just right for you. And that gait is governed by a part of your brain that knows how to sequence the muscles in just the right amount at the right time for the right intensity. Those calculations were made a long time ago. The running form that you have was probably developed by ancient ancestors. Escaping predation and food acquisition is what got runners to be better. The better you did it, the more likely you would survive. Your ancestors survived, then you arrived. So we know that you're the descendant of a great runner somewhere. Hmm. Now, when you start a running program, your body's not used to it. And it's going to take a while for all of those calibrations to find the right equilibrium. But as you get stronger, you run more miles, you get more and more attuned to your own physical attributes, and you get more efficient. I'm proud of you. We have so much work to do. Are there situations where gait analysis or changing someone's gait will actually be beneficial to the runner? There are circumstances. I think when you're dealing with very high level runners, subtle changes might be in order. You know, you can get them to, to change a little bit. But we also have to remember people like Jeffrey Mutai or Usain Bolt or Priska Jeptu. Usain Bolt, for example, you know, he has a one half inch short leg. His left foot has a 16% longer ground contact time. He has a wicked scoliosis. And when they looked at him in high speed motion videography, they discovered that the gait is asymmetric and they started scratching their heads going, what are we gonna do about this guy? You know, this gait needs to be corrected or it could be corrected. But then on second thought, the guy has broken every world record you can imagine. He's one of the greatest sprinters we've ever seen. If you change his gait, what's going to happen to him? He's already as good as you're going to ever see in a runner. What would you change? Sometimes these little peccadillos in your gait should be left alone. Who, in your opinion, is best suited for making a recommendation or a recommendation against gait training? Is it coaches, physicians, your friend from down the street who used to run in high school and ran a fast time? Yeah, more often than not, the people who are uh, passing out advice in gait training are people who run faster than you. They just run faster than you. So it's presumed that because a person runs faster than you, that they know how to do it better. So then they go and read a book and they go, well, it turns out that the Kenyans run on their forefoot and they run barefoot. So given that that's what they do, that's what you should probably do. And again, it doesn't take into account the anatomical typing that they have. So we see coaches, running shoe stores, and more often than not, just friends uh, telling people how they should run. And probably the biggest number of people I've seen giving gait advice are amateur coaches that have absolutely no training. They are people that are well-meaning. They may train with a fundraising organization or be in a club or maybe in a, maybe in a group of friends and they've run five marathons and this is your first marathon. And uh, they feel empowered to give out advice because it feels good to give advice and help people but oftentimes that advice is pretty hollow. I hate to say that because I don't want to invalidate people who are well-meaning, but I also don't want to see people get hurt. So don't listen to them. Listen to your own body. Right, yeah, because they say like the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? That's true. Let's talk about something that's related to running gait, but could perhaps be defined better, running economy and running efficiency. You know, that has to do with how do you take one calorie and convert it into the most forward motion? If you get a lot of forward motion out of a calorie, that's economical. That's like saying, I'm only going to put a teaspoon of gas in my car. How far can I go on that teaspoon of gas? You have this conundrum of, I've got to burn calories to get more calories. How am I going to do that? Well, you're going to have to be as economical as possible with the calories you already have in your possession, in your fat reserves and in your glycogen stores in your body. So what are you going to do to achieve that? Well, running efficiency and running economy are locked arm in arm with how your gait is regulated and it becomes more efficient the more you use it. And I would say if you want to develop running economy, run more. The more you run, the more economical it gets. If anybody has any questions for Dr. Smith, please reach out to him through his Facebook page or his Instagram. We'll see you on the next one.